Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. This upcoming year, AMD will be releasing a plethora of products across CPUs, GPUs, and also APUs, which are highly anticipated. Zen 5 will be, of course, found in servers, desktops and laptops and that's to say nothing of APUs um, which are going to be very interesting indeed with these Strix point APUs and we also have RDNA 4 which is actually looking pretty promising so I want to talk to you guys about some interesting announcements that AMD have made in their recent Q1 2024 earnings call plus some other rumors that have been circulating as well so the first things first Epic is now starting to sample and these are the Turin based ones is actually Turin and Turin dense but for the sake of this video I'm just going to put them into one category and of course as I said these are based on the next generation processors Zen 5. We also have Strix starting to sample and I also believe the Ryzen CPUs are as well and basically this is all going to be very important because these are products of course which AMD are now confirming is on track to release later this year. Lisa Su said we're widely sampling Turin. The silicon is looking great in the cloud. The significant performance and efficiency increases Turin position as well to capture an even larger share of both first and third party workloads. In addition, there are 30% more Turin platforms in development from our server partners compared to the fourth generation Epic platforms, increasing our enterprise with new solution optimi optimized excuse me, for additional workloads. Turin remains on track to launch later this year. She also goes on to discuss the customer side of things and she said that the next step in our AI PC roadmap later this year with the next generation Ryzen mobile processors codenamed Strix. Customer interest in Strix is very high based on the significant performance and energy efficiency uplifts we are delivering. By the way, credit to WCCF Tech who have put this into text form that is highly appreciated. Design win momentum for premium notebooks is outpacing prior generations as Strix is enabling next generation AI experiences in laptops that are thinner, lighter and faster. The AI PC products, when we look at the Strix products, it's really well suited for the premium segments of the market and I think that's where you're going to see some of the AI content strongest in the beginning. Then as we go into 2025, you will see it across the rest of the portfolio. Now that is a very important quote because to my understanding Strix Point will be announced at Computex but the Halo products which I'm sure you've probably heard of uh, basically Sarlacc and by the way we'll talk about a rumor concerning those in just a second uh, those I'm actually hearing is going to be at CES so basically the first quarter of next year is when I'm expecting those to launch as well as the X3D variants of the uh, Ryzen 9000 series so so basically, it's going to be kind of a segmented launch, as always with AMD, with the vanilla uh, Granite Ridge processors uh, this year. And again, I'm expecting pretty much all of the announcement information concerning those at uh, Computex. I'm probably expecting maybe a June slash July release for those. Um, and RDNA 4, I also believe, is going to be this year. I'm still getting pushed back from one source concerning a release date, but generally speaking, I do think that uh, the next generation of Ryzen processors will launch this year. So frankly, if you haven't yet jumped on AN5, my personal opinion, and obviously, you know, it kind of depends on what your needs are, but my personal opinion, just don't buy anything yet. Just wait. Unless, like, your PC has literally exploded and you really need to buy now maybe buy like an am5 motherboard and then possibly the cheapest uh zen uh zen 4 based cpu you can get your hands on maybe but uh, other than that i just would not upgrade right now guys i just don't think it's prudent you may recall um a I don't know, just under a week ago, I can't remember exactly, but several days ago, I covered a rumor um, from HKEPC, and they managed to basically snag a document that had been leaked on Twitter. And this was essentially confirming, quote unquote, because obviously at the end of the day, A, specifications could have changed, B, this could be a fake document. You know what you know the general thing is with rumors, but basically it was confirming the specifications for the most part anyway on both both Strix Point and Strix Halo. 
Um, I won't go through all of the specifications again here because I've discussed this several times in the past, but basically speaking for the Halo products, which again, you may have uh, heard as a uh, Sarlacc, we're looking at 16 cores, 32 threads. Each um, core has one megabyte of L2. So if you have 16 cores, obviously that means 16 megabytes of L2 total. And then you have 32 megabytes of L3. This seems to be unified. And I believe the GPU, which is based on RDNA 3.5, can also make use of this. And it has up to 20 work group processors. So this is pretty impressive. And we can also see confirmation here on the, um, on the TOPS performance. Um, up to 60 in this case with a 256-bit LP DDR5 interface, which should give decent amounts of memory bandwidth. It's going to be very interesting to see how this performs. Now, I do want to talk about a rumor, actually. Um, so, a while back, I can't remember the exact date I released the video, um, but I know it was earlier uh, last month, which at the time I'm recording this would be April. I think it was around the midpoint of April, like the 12th, 13th, something around there. I had released a video that basically I was talking about some stuff concerning the Strix Point Halo processors um, in uh, from Sarlacc, and this was some older information I'd actually put, uh, managed to obtain in January. There's not a huge amount here that's new, um, so I'm not going to read out the specifications because basically that essentially is confirming, well, this slide or this information that I've been given now has basically been proven right, quote-unquote, with the leaked information. However, um, there has been some rumors online concerning, uh, well, basically... LP, uh, Strix Point LP. But if you look at um, what I've written here, I've been told that Strix Point has a CPU core cluster in the IO die, but these are low power cores. They are not the same as the Zen 5 CCXs, which are for high performance tasks, the lower power cluster. Again, this is part of the IO die, is specifically designed um, around background slash idle tasks. And secondly, I've been told that 32 megabytes of L3 cache is definitely unified with the GPU, blah, blah, blah. So I've now had another source. Um, they can't send me the documents, uh, because they are watermarked to shit, but they are pretty accurate. And they have basically told me Strix Point Halo has LP SOC Zen 5C cores. So basically, the exact understanding of what these cores are slightly changes, but from what my understanding is, they are essentially a new type of processor core that is directly part of the IO die. So this is not like another variant of Sarlacc. Um, this is essentially like, it's basically just a wording. Now, my information could certainly be wrong. And if it is, you know, that's, that's what it is. But to my understanding, based on speaking to several people now, that's what I'm told. Um, so basically the IO die itself has essentially a little CPU core in it, which again is designed around background tasks. So essentially if, for example, and this is just a pure hypothetical, obviously, but if you're you know, PC isn't doing any big updates, you're just on desktop, you're not doing it, or should I say your laptop, you're not doing anything particularly taxing, you're just there, maybe reading a web page, um, or perhaps just, you know, your system's booted and you're going to get a coffee or something like that. That's when these processor cores are going to basically be doing pretty much all of the work. Obviously, if you have Steam and GOG and Epic Games and every other piece of crap under the sun launcher that's deciding, hello, my time is now then obviously that's a bit different, but you get the idea. So that's kind of what these things are going to be used for. So yeah, um, I think this is going to be a very interesting year for AMD, and that is putting it absolutely mildly. Um, my personal advice is probably to start saving your pennies, because um, if the rumors are true, we're going to be getting pretty much every product under the sun that is going to be releasing. I've heard some very good pricing information, actually, for RDNA 4. I don't want to quite say it at the moment, because I'm getting a little bit of conflicting information, but potentially it could be really good news. Let's just say that you could be pleasantly surprised. My only concern is uh, whether or not we actually see the GPUs launch MSRP, because quite frankly... The GPU market is an absolute meme at the best of times. <laughs> yeah. Um, with that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this uh, particular video. 
I've been kind of dealing with like the plague over the past few days, hence the fact that I haven't really been uh, putting out videos. So apologies again for not being on camera. I'm almost back to normal, but uh, yeah, um, it's just absolutely kicked my ass. I think it was from the traveling, to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm almost back to normal, so uh, normal service shall resume. There are a couple of interesting videos, including a really fun one, actually, I've been working on, which I, is... It's definitely a dumbass video, but it's very fun in terms of testing. So stick around. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.